Shiva 
First place, uh, huh? first we'll see the Samadhi of the Chankazi, and you'll see the two trees there. There's a Champaka tree and a Nim tree. Champaka tree is in relation to the Chankazi. Chankazi was known as Champak, and that, and there's a Nim tree as well. Nim tree, of course, Nimai. So that, that shows the intimate relationship, the friendship between Nimai and Chankazi. And so that Samadhi is there. It's a, an important monument uh, there. It, it's important evidence for the, the uh, birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because the Chankazi Samadhi is uh, it's built where it's home used to be, where his residence was. So, we, after seeing the Chankazi, but you know, we're not going to be stopping, so you can just offer obeisances and we'll move on. And then we will come to Murari Gupta's house. Really? So, yeah? Well, that's after the yoga teacher, Murari. Okay, so then we'll, we're going to go to Marari Gupta's house. There's deities there of, there's small deities, Sitaram, Lakshman, Hanuman. They're not Marari Gupta's deities. Marari Gupta, of course, was a great devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And at one point, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had requested Marari Gupta to give up the worship of Lord Ram and simply worship Radha and Krishna. And the whole night, Morari Gupta could not sleep, he could not rest, he was so disturbed because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had requested him to give up the worship of Sita and Ram. So the next morning, he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he fell at Mahaprabhu's feet and said, I will have to give up my life. You have asked me to give up the worship of Lord Rama and I cannot do it. I cannot follow your instruction. My heart does not allow me to give up the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, he smiled and said to Marari Gupta, that's all right, you are Hanuman. You don't have to give up the worship of Lord Ramachandra. So, Gauraganadesh Tapika describes the identity of different personalities in Chaitanya Lila and Morari Gupta, he is considered to be non different from Hanuman. So, Morari Gupta's house is there. Morari Gupta was a physician, he was an Ayurvedic doctor, and he would treat diseases, but he could also treat spiritual diseases. It said one time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had, had been given too much prasadam and he suffered from indigestion. Then he went to Marari Gupta and Marari Gupta gave him some water from his pot and cured his indigestion. So uh, Marari Gupta was very important because he witnessed all the childhood activities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from his very birth. And Morari Gupta was such an intelligent person that he kept a diary of all of the pastimes. 
He had witnessed all the pastimes of Chaitanya as a small child, and he kept a diary of all of these things. So this diary was very, very important when it came to compiling books like Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagwat, because Murari Gupta had witnessed all of these things and he recorded everything. So that when when Krishna Das Kaviraj and Men Vrindavan Das Thakur and Lochan Das Thakur were writing their books about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they would they would consult the diary of Murari Gupta. Yeah, Murari Gupta Korcha. Murari Gupta. Is it available? Can you get? Can we, is anybody ever printed? Do you think? Is it available? No? Some like Chaitanya Bhagwat, the original Chaitanya Bhagwat, you can actually see it. We went to one, one place, I don't remember the name of the place, but they had the original Chaitanya Bhagwat on palm leaves. And we were able to have darshan of that. You, and you can see how they wrote everything, how it was all written by pen and uh, written on palm leaves and these palm leaves are still preserved today so marari gupta's diary i don't know if it's available nobody knows nobody's seen copies of it but it was available at that time and it was consulted when they were writing the chaitanya bhagwat Oh, really? Banaswami has already translated the diaries of Marari Gupta? Oh, so there you go. So it is available somewhere because Banaswami has translated that. So any of you who are interested to read about Marari Gupta and his diary, so you can get a book from Banaswami's people in Chennai. All right, so then after visiting Morari Gupta's house. Uh, we're not going to. Then we're going to pa we'll go past the Chaitanya Mat. Chaitanya Mat was established by His Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada. Then the Chaitanya Mat, the presiding deities are Gandharvika and Giridhari. The very beautiful deities which Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati personally arranged to install there in the temple. And you'll see also in, in that temple uh, there are four, uh, yeah, the four sampradayas are re represented. As you go around the temple, as you go uh, do parikrama around the temple, circumambulate the temple, you can see the acharyas from each of the four sampradayas. And uh, they have, of course, Madhva Acharya for the uh, Brahma Madhva line, and they have Ramanuja Acharya for the Sri Sampradaya, and they have Vishnu Swami for the Shiva Sampradaya, and they have also Nimbaka for the uh, line coming from the four Kumaras. So, the, and inside the Chaitanya Mat, it's a big compound, and they have also the Samadhi of Gorkishore Das Babaji, and then further around also you see there's the Samadhi of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada and Bhajan Kutir and other samadhis of other acharyas after Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, different acharyas who, who took over the management of the temple, became the acharya there. So their samadhis there, their Bhajan Kutir, their Tirtha Maharaj, people like this. So the Chaitanya Mat is uh, 
quite a big place and there's different buildings around the place. It's easy to get lost and get separated. The Samadhi of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati is established there in Mayapur, but actually Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he left the body in Calcutta. He had been over, he'd been in Puri, he'd been in Arisa, traveling and preaching. His health, his health was not good. The devotees were worried about his health and they, they could understand it was coming time for him to finish his pastimes in this world. He was traveling on the train coming back from Arisa and every station, groups of devotees would assemble at the train station to meet him and to honor him and to offer their respects to him. And in this way he came to Calcutta and then at the, at the Bhag Bazar temple, the big marble temple, it, that was where he gave up his body. And so his divine body, after he disappeared, then his divine body was brought out to Mayapur. They came out and by a special train, they brought his body and brought it in procession to Mayapur and laid his body in Samadhi there. Uh, yeah, oh, he, in, the, in the Chaitanya Mat, they also established a, a replica of Govardhan Hill. They have their own Govardhan Hill because we say everything in the Mayapur Dam is all, it's, whatever's there in Vrindavan is also in Mayapur. And so Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati established a Govardhan Hill, a miniature, not, not very big Govardhan Hill, but there is a Govardhan Hill there. There's also a Radha Kund and a Shama Kund. And so they have these kind of, they have these places and, you know, we also do like that. Some of our different temples, they've also recreated the places of the pastimes of Krishna. So in Chaitanya Mat, you can find these things. Uh, the Bhajan Kut, the, the Samadhi of Gorkishore Das Babaji, it was initially there in Navadweep, but there was a, some problem with the Ganga moving and uh, some erosion and it was necessary to relocate the Samadhi of Gorkishodras Babaji. So then they brought him, his divine body, over to Mayapur and placed the Samadhi in the there at the Chaitanya Mat. So Chaitanya Mat we, we won't be going into. Uh, and then you'll see also Sri Vas Angam. After the Chaitanya Mat, we'll come to Sri Vas Angam, the, the residence of Sri Vas Pandit. And that residence of Sri Vas Pandit, that is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed many of his pastimes. It is said just like Lord Krishna appeared in Mathura, but after his birth in Mathura, his pastimes were all in Vrindavan. So similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared at the Yoga Peeth, that was the place of his birth, but the place which he chose for many of his pastimes was in the home of Srivas Pandit. We call Srivas Anga, the courtyard of Srivas. Srivas did not stay alone. He stayed with, there were four brothers. They all stayed together. And they had their family, their wives and their children. And there was people like Narayani. We heard about Narayani, remember, the daughter of uh, one of Srivas Pandit's brothers and how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would give the remnants to Narayani. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Srivasi's home regularly to do the nocturnal kirtan. Mahaprabhu decided why we should sleep at night. Yeah. Let's have kirtan every night instead of sleeping every night. You know, why waste our time in, in the mode of ignorance, sleeping? Instead of sleeping, let's have kirtan every night. So after Mahaprabhu came back from Gaya, 
Then he began the nocturnal kirtans in the home of Srivas Pandit. And then also Lord Nityananda used to often reside there in the home of Srivas Pandit. Lord Nityananda first appeared there's a, the, at the residence of Nandan Acharya. Nandan Acharya is our next door neighbor at Mayapur. If you go, come out of our Iskon temple and then walk towards the Ghat, where you get the ferry over to Navadri, the first, the first temple we will see is where the residence of Nandan Acharya was. And it was at the residence of Nandan Acharya, Lord Chaitanya brought all the devotees and showed them, introduced them to Lord Nityananda. And even other people sometimes disappeared, they went away, and they would find them in the home of Nandan Acharya. Somehow they like to go to their Nandan Acharya's house and uh, they would like hide themselves there in the home of Nandan Acharya. So Lord Nityananda appeared at the home of Nandan Acharya, but regularly he was staying at the home of Srivas Pandit. And I think we heard yesterday that Lord Chaitanya, he would test Srivas. He said to Srivas, he said, you know, this, this Nityananda is a madman. Srivas, he said, you ruin your reputation by allowing him to come to your home. He's just a madman. You're a respectable brahmana. And you have a family. And you, have, you have a good name in the society. But if you have this Nityananda in your home, he'll ruin your reputation. But Srivas Pandit said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, I can never give up the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Even if he marries a Muslim girl. <laughs> uh, even if I see him coming out of a liquor shop, I will never give up the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. <laughs> so when Lord Chaitanya heard this, he was so pleased with Srivas. He said, because you have so much faith in the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, he gave the benediction that even if the goddess of fortune has to go begging, your home will never know any poverty. And that's the fact that Srivas was a Brahman and the Brahmins didn't work. They didn't, the Brahmins won't take a job, sometimes they will beg. But Srivas didn't worry really about begging. Somehow everything was just provided by the grace of the Supreme Lord. So it happened at the home of Srivas, they were having kirtan and the Chankazi came there. As we saw when yesterday when they did the drama of the Chankazi, the Kazi came with his men because the, the, the smarter Brahmins, the orthodox Brahmins did not like that the devotees were all doing kirtan. They were saying, no, we should, they shouldn't chant the Vedas, these people are not Brahmins, they shouldn't be chanting the Vedas, and we should chant silently, and so many different things. So they complained to the Chankazi and influenced the mind of the Chankazi. And the Chankazi came there and broke the Madanga. And that was there in the home of Srivas. It took place. The Chankazi came and broke the Madanga. So Srivas was quite afraid about the danger that the Chankazi may come and arrest everyone and make them Mohammedans even. They would lose their caste. So that was very fearful for Srivas and the other devotees, that at any time they could be punished, they could lose their caste, they could be made Mohammedans. But Lord Chaitanya told Srivas, Srivas, don't, you don't have to worry, that, that if anything happens, I will come there and I will talk to the Kazi 
and I will tell them. He said, I will ask them, get your Muslim priest to come and ask him, can he make any of these animals cry in love of God? Ask any of these Mohammedan priests to come and let's see, let's see their power. Let's see if they can influence the thinking of the animals and make them cry in love of God. And I will show them. And in order to convince Srivas of his power, he turned to Narayani and he told little, the little girl Narayani, who was only like four years old, Narayani, cry for Krishna. And Narayani immediately became overwhelmed by ecstatic love for Krishna. And she shed tears and trembled and all the hairs on her body stood on end. And she rolled in the on the ground again and again, tossing back and forth in ecstasy of love of God. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya convinced Srivas Thakur that he had nothing to fear, that he was going to protect him. So the home of Srivas Pandit is very important, very special place. Sometimes we go there and have kirtans. It's difficult. It's not a very big place. We can try to get in and maybe we can offer obeisances there. But we won't be stopping because there will be many people around. It will be difficult. All right. And then you will see also the residence of Advaita Acharya and Gadarhar Pandit residence. They're also near to the Srivas Angam. Advaita Acharya has two homes, one home in Shantipur and one home there in Mayapur. And so he was regularly associated with Sachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. And when Sachi Mata gave birth, then Advaita Acharya came with his wife and they made offerings to the child, everything. So Advaita Acharya's residence is there. Gadarhar Pandit Gadarhar grew up in the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They were, they were childhood associates. And later on when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, Gadarhar followed him to Puri also. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu finished his pastimes in this world, then Gadarhar also, in a very short time, he also left the world. He could not bear the separation from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we'll see the residence of Gadarhar and Advaita Acharya. We can offer obeisances there also. Any other place? Yeah, we'll pass also the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the yoga peep. And we won't go inside because <laughs> you'll see when we go, you'll see inside, you'll see there's, there's just so many people everywhere, you can't move. And we'll be lucky to just move along the road. But from outside, we will offer our respects to the, uh, the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and also to Vrida Shiva, the, the, uh, the, the protector of the dam, the Shintrapal Shiva. And we offer our respects to him. By his mercy only, we have entered into the holy dam and we've been able to visit the different islands of Navadweep and hear all the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And from there, then we'll go on and return to Mayapur, where we have the Maga Mela, and we'll meet with all the other Kirtan parties. So all of the different parties are coming, and we're all going to assemble together. We'll go by the Gurukula. We're going on that road past the Gurukula. What's it 
Yeah. Okay. So. So breakfast is going to be in Mayapur, of course. Gadabhavan. Yeah, in Gadabhavan, uh, with this wristband. You have to show the wristband, breakfast prasadam will be given. Okay, if you have a wristband, you get breakfast at Gadabhavan this morning. And for lunch, you have to register again. Okay, so you have to register one more time. To get lunch. <laughs> okay. Uh, book score is as follows. For whole parikrama, I'm reading. Right now, the kata will take place now because later on there won't be any opportunity, and we have to be in the Mahamela place by eight o'clock. So we're going to have some kata for a little while here. Now, maybe by about six o'clock we will leave. So you should put your stuff, put your luggage where you found it last night. Put your luggage back so they can take it to Mayapur for you. And we're just going to have a kata over in the pandal there, just next to the temple here. <laughs> Vaishnava Pranam, Vancha Kaupata Rudyascha, Kripa Sindhu Gaevacha, Vajita Nam Pavadivyo, Vaishnavivyo Hono Naman, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Rindaki Jai. So your luggage, you can pack it up now. We'll begin the kata here at five thirty. Five thirty. Second place, Shiv Palak Nitai Das Prabhu. Nitai Das Prabhu with team 297 books distributed. Okay, we are giving a gift, a book of Ratha Yatra. Kavichandra Swami Maharaj also distributed 19 books.
So it's always a great pleasure to go on the Parikrama around Navadvip and see the holy places. And I was noticing how as we go through the villages every year, more and more of the villagers are coming out to greet us. Initially, you know, in the beginning when we began Parikrama many years ago, we would chant Hare Krishna to them. But now they're chanting Hare Krishna to us. So Parikrama Surute Bahu Bacharage Tokon Amra Tadarke Hare Krishna Vulle Boltam Ekon de Sitara Amadake de Hare Krishna Vulse. So I see the the look I see the local people there, the Dambasis, they have a gen a very deep interest in our Krishna consciousness movement. Kami Densi did Samasa Dambasira I think we need to make some temples in these different places. Because we are going to have some temples in these different places. Ami mare in but I didn't see, I don't think we have too many ISKCON temples in the town. In the Mahabharana, I think we have to be there for the ISKCON Mandir. So that's my wish. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. A wonderful uh, speech. We will now like to welcome his